morning. Y'all doing all right? I feel like I, I kind of missed most of worship, <clears throat> but I kind of, when I felt like I walked in, it was kind of like the room had just gone, just kind of settled, huh? Which is okay sometimes. Sometimes you don't need to jump around. Sometimes you just need to fall asleep during worship. Come on, somebody, right? Anybody fall asleep during worship? Don't raise your hand. Actually, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. <clears throat> I'm um, really, really excited to be with you this morning and uh, getting a chance to, to share a message with you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Keith, and I'm the, the campus pastor of our uh, Lubbock campus, and uh, things are going great there, but it's a, always a, a privilege and honor and always just gets me excited and jacked up when I get to come, come back to Midland because I love you guys. I love preaching to you. I love being in this new building. How many of you are thankful for this new building? It's been like a year now. Come on. I did this in first service. If you were a part of Cole Theater Days, raise your hand. Oh, awesome. All right, put your hands down. If you were a part of the setup and teardown at any point, raise your hand. Real nice and high, like, because you did something for the Lord, like, real nice and high. How many of, of, of you are extremely thankful for this building? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That setup and teardown thing was... A crazy, crazy thing. We actually are are doing kind of the same thing in Lubbock right now. We have uh, we're actually meeting out of the YWCA, and and uh, it's it's nowhere near what it was like at the Cole Theater. We have our own children's classrooms, and sanctuary never really gets messed up. We always just got to transform the foyer. How many of you would have liked that? Just transforming the foyer that'd have been nice, but it wasn't. It didn't happen. Okay, sorry. Don't. If you're living in the past, you need to move on. Press towards the goal for the upward call that Christ Jesus has put before you. Forget the past. Forget them set up and tear down days in Jesus' name. You know, if that's you, raise your hand. We're going to lay hands on them. No, I'm kidding. We're not, we're not going to do that. Awesome. Um, well, I want to jump right in today. Today I want to talk to you about, a, a, honestly, a special message um, I think there's, there's more to it than, than what I've even began to share. I, I, I preached it two weeks ago in Lubbock, and I just feel like the Lord continues to share more and more about this. Before I tell you what we're going to talk about, though, I just want you to open up your, your spirit to this word today. Today is going to be way more about you receiving than it is about you learning. You're going to learn something, but it's going to be, it's going to be more about this word getting imparted into you it's going to be more about you receiving this thing. Can I just say this? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. You are a spirit. Y'all don't believe me. This, okay, so this happened in the first service. I'm going to try over here. You're a spirit. Okay, y'all believe it over here. You're going to help your friends over there, okay? You are, you are a spirit, which means you are spiritual. Yes, even you. Because when I said that, you thought, I'm not spiritual. Yeah, you are. You're spiritual. You are a spirit being. You are called to live by the spirit in the spirit. If God couldn't make it more clear to us multiple times in scripture, he talks that we, what, what does another scripture say? It says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Spiritual powers. We are a spirit. We operate as a spirit. And today I'm wanting, I'm kind of wanting you to receive this message kind of, kind of there. If I could say it like that right there in your spirit, to get out of your head, because what I'm going to say, you know in your head, but it needs to get down into your heart, amen? Today, I wanna talk to you about what it means to belong to Jesus. What does it mean to belong to Jesus? What are the benefits of belonging to Jesus? Let's just start off by just, let's just declare that over ourselves. I want everyone to say, Say, I belong to Jesus. Now, let's say it like we mean it. Say, I belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. Like the Jesus. Like the one you, we all talk about and came here for. You belong to him. Have you ever noticed that there are benefits to belonging to something? That there are benefits when it comes to belonging to something. Let me give you an example. If you, if you belong to a country club, there are certain benefits that you have, right? 
You, you get to go play golf whenever you want. You, uh, you get to use a swimming pool in the summertime. You get invited to all the special dinners at the country club that if you're not a part of a membership, you don't get invited to. See, when you belong to something, you, you reap the benefit of belonging to that something. Think about the, the job that you work at, the organization, the business that you're a part of. There are some benefits of belonging to that business, right? Some of you are driving around in a company truck. You got your company phone. You're really thankful right now that you got the company gas card. <laughs> right? There, there are benefits. There are perks, if I could say it that way. There are perks to belonging to something. Did you know that, that it's actually the, the same is true when it comes to belonging to someone? What do you think about the people or the people groups that you belong to? The relationships that you have that you're super connected to, that you're close with. Have you noticed the benefits of being in those relationships? Have you noticed the benefits of belonging to something? We got my man in his Dallas cowboy hat. Have you noticed that finally, praise God, there's actually benefits to belonging to the Dallas Cowboys? Oh, all your life. I told you, forget the past. Look forward that lies ahead. He's got a plan for you to prosper you, not to harm you. When you belong to someone, you reap the benefits. You know, and just to give you another example, uh, have you noticed when you're, if you, if you have a really, really close friend that their stuff kind of becomes your stuff? I got a guy right here in the front. He, me and Brody grew up uh, in college, didn't grow up. We were in college together. We kind of grew up together. Yeah, we, we were definitely not growing up in those stages. He used to steal my clothes all the time. Like I would just be like, where is my shirt? And he's like, oh, I have it. You didn't ask. Yeah, no, I got it though. I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess I'm good with that, right? But like people's stuff becomes, your, your friend's stuff kind of becomes yours. Like if you have a friend with a boat, guess what? You kind of have a boat. <laughs> if, you got, if you have a friend with a cabin in the mountains, guess what? You kind of got a cabin in the mountains, right? If you got a cabin in the mountains, by the way, come talk to me. I'm going to lay hands on you and we're going to become best friends <laughs> at the end of service today. <clears throat> but there are benefits. See, the quality of your life is highly dependent upon the people that you are connected to, the people that you belong to. See, when you belong to people, their strength will become your strength. When you belong to a family, the wisdom in that family will become your wisdom. Their wisdom will get off on you. When, you. when you belong to certain people, even the spiritual gifts that they carry will begin to get to, to come off of them and to come on to you. You see it in Scripture where I think it was Saul, he walked up, uh, King Saul walked up the mountain with a group of prophets, and it says that he came down prophesying. He had never done it before, but because he got around it, what they had got on him. See, what you belong, there are benefits to belonging. Now I want to remind you who you just said you belong to. You belong to Jesus. And if you belong to a natural family can benefit you, imagine what it must be like to belong to Jesus. Imagine that today you're sitting here as a, as a, as a believer. I want you to know you belong to Jesus the Jesus, the one who walked on water, the one who raised the dead, the one who multiplied the fish and the loaves of bread, the one who was there before the, the beginning, the one through which everything was created, Jesus, the Son of God, the name above every name that every knee will bow to and every tongue will confess to. That is who you belong to. You belong to Jesus. And I kind of wonder today, are we acting like it? Do we act like we belong to Jesus? Do you think like you belong to Jesus? The way that you approach life and the thoughts that you have about that problem or the thoughts that you have about your marriage or the thoughts that you have about yourself, are they thoughts that are coming from a perspective that says, I belong to Jesus? See, I believe that if this can get down on the inside of us, it will literally change every single aspect of our life. Anything that you're walking through right now that is negative, that is not from the Lord, I got a, I got a really good word for you. 
you belong to Jesus. And when you realize you belong to Jesus, that thing can't stay. Romans chapter 8. Let's jump into some scripture before I get too far ahead of myself. Romans chapter 8. We're going to be re reading verses 1 through 2 and then skipping down to verse 15. We, we, we know this scripture, but I want you to concentrate on another part. It says, so now there is no condemnation. That's a good word. So now there is no condemnation for those who what? Who belong to Christ Jesus. You want to know the first benefit? You want to know the first thing that brings quality to your life as a believer? You literally get to live your life with zero guilt, shame, and condemnation. The benefit of belonging to Jesus, the benefit of belonging to your elder brother Jesus is that his blood has so cleansed you and so made you righteous that you are literally walking around guilt-free, shame-free. The only condemnation that you feel is the one you're allowing yourself to feel. Because Jesus doesn't feel that way about you. God doesn't feel that way about you. Because in him, there is no. The word, it's, it's funny because that word no in the Greek means no. 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 No condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. It goes on in verse 2 to say, and because you belong to Jesus... You think Paul was trying to get something across to us here? And because you belong to Jesus, you belong to him. <clears throat> the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You want to know the second benefit of belonging to Jesus? You have power over sin. It's actually, it's actually two benefits right here wrapped up in one, one scripture. You've been given the life-giving spirit, and you've been freed from the power of sin. See, some of you don't believe this yet. Some of y'all think, think that that sin has more power than you. Got really good news for you. It doesn't. It doesn't. And you're like, yeah, but you, you ain't following me around Monday through Saturday. <laughs> you, you're, not, you're not getting to watch this whole power thing work out. Yeah, I got really good news for you. I don't have to. I don't have to walk around with you. You wouldn't like that anyway. Because my Bible says the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin and death. You want, to know, you want to know how you actually overcome that sin that you keep dealing with? It's not by you trying harder. It's by you believing better. I don't, mind, I don't mean believing like you got you to gotta try better to believe. I'm saying believe better things about yourself. And you want to know the better truth? You want to know the real truth? The truth is you've been freed from the power of sin. When you realize that you've been freed from it, you'll be free from it. you got to believe it. This is, it's not about you. It's not about what you've done. You want to know why you get the benefit of walking around with the power over sin? One simple reason. You belong to Jesus. It's because you belong to him. He goes on in verse 15. <clears throat> Some of y'all, come on, would y'all just say, that's a good word? Okay, okay, because I'm about to just keep preaching, even if you don't think it is, okay? So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. <clears throat> you have not received a spirit that makes you a fearful slave. When you belong, when you, when you receive Jesus, you know what you did not receive? You did not receive a fearful slave mentality. Yet many believers live their whole life as a fearful slave. Not a fearful slave to fear, a fearful slave to God. You are not a slave, you're a son. Am I preaching to anybody in here? You are not a slave, you're a daughter of the Most High. You don't got to walk around afraid if you're going to mess up or, 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 or risk it and give someone a word and it, and it messes their whole life up or, or, or walk around and, and say something you're not supposed to say. You don't have to live that way because he didn't give you a, a fearful slave spirit. You know, what, you know what he gave you? He goes on to say what he gave you. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit 
to affirm that we are God's children. That's the spirit that you received. It's a spirit of adoption. It's a spirit that says you're his. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. Come on, say heirs. We are his heirs. <clears throat> you know what an heir gets? An heir gets an inheritance. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. I want to title the message, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Holy Spirit, thank you. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for moving in this place. Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you are the word. And we just say, come. <clears throat> come, Lord. Do a work today. We open up ourselves to receive, just to receive. Receive this revelation. Let it go from our head to our heart today, from our head to our heart, from our head down into our heart, that we would actually live like we belong to Jesus. Yes, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. As I was preparing this message, <clears throat> I, I, be, I had this vision, and I, I want to invite you into this vision. In fact, I'm, I'm really wanting, what, what I believe, one of the ways that we actually get things out of our head and down into our heart is by using our imagination. See, y'all creatives didn't hear me. Y'all should have said amen. It's by, it's by using your imagination. Amen. Oh, there's a lot of you in here, okay? So I'm actually asking you, see, like, I love what Steve-O did. Some of you are like, that was weird. I didn't want a color. I didn't have a coloring book. He, he was telling you to use your imagination. You remember? You remember what that is, right? That thing that we as adults don't do anymore. The, one that, that, the, the thing that we throw aside because it's not mature. Except Jesus said this, if you want to inherit the kingdom of God, he says, come like a little child. So let's go ahead and take, oh, I'm going to make you do something weird again. Go ahead and reach back, grab your imagination. Come on right now, reach back, grab it, bring it up here. Okay, you got your imagination now, right? I want you to use it because I think this is, when you picture this and you, you use these analogies, these stories I'm going to tell you, it's actually going to help you take what's, what you have in here and it's going to get it down into here, Okay. So I had this vision, <clears throat> and I saw this man, and he was walking around in a mansion, okay? He was walking around in this mansion. If you see movies where, where they, you know, you come into a mansion, what you always see is, is some big, great room, right? There's not much in it. Um, it's just like, hey, I'm rich, and I just wanted to show you how much space I can, I can build, you know? And you walk in, it's a big foyer. This is where this man was, and he was pacing back and forth in this mansion, and he had his head down. He was not looking around. And as I was watching this man and this vision kind of move around, <clears throat> I, I began to, the Lord began to show me things about his life. It's kind of like when you're watching a movie and you kind of know more about the character than they, they know about themselves type of thing. You got to get their history all in one thing. It's, that's kind of how it was. And I could tell that he had been homeless. In fact, as he was walking around this mansion, he had uh, holes in his shirt. His, his clothes were just really nasty, and um, you could just tell he was homeless, that he had been roaming the streets. I had a sense that he had a drug problem, which is what actually put him there. <clears throat> just very oppressed, depressed. He was hungry. Um, he, had, he was in severe lack. And as I'm watching him walk in, around in this mansion... I begin to realize that everything that he needs is in the mansion. If he would just look up and walk around that corner and push open that door, there was a massive kitchen. There was a chef in there. There were like three or four workers with all, I mean, it was bustling with all kinds of food. He could have got fed right there. I knew upstairs there were all kinds of rooms with a king bed and a in a, a, a massive shower where he could get all cleaned up. Surely there was some clothes he could find in the mansion. And then I started to realize, oh my gosh, downstairs in the garage, this is for all you guys, there's all kinds of sports cars down in the garage. And better than that, 
there's a chauffeur just waiting at the door, ready to take him wherever he wants to go. And I'm, I'm sensing and seeing all this as I'm seeing this man walk around. And all of a sudden, I, I begin to realize, oh, my gosh, everything in this mansion was made for him. That chef, that kitchen, they're waiting for him to walk in. That room upstairs, there's actually a whole wardrobe, and it's full of clothes, like suits, like c c perfectly tailored, like James Bond tailored for his body. All kinds of stuff up there. The cars, his whenever he wanted them. The chauffeur, waiting on him. But what was amazing about the whole thing <clears throat> is this man would never look up and realize where he was at. You know what was crazy about it? He had no idea he was in a mansion. It was as if, it was as if go with me with your imagination, it was like he got transported off the street and put into this mansion, but with his eyes all he, all he saw was him still walking on the street. He got transported and had no idea where he was. And it was literally at his fingertips. But because his perspective was so on him and what he was going through and all the, 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 the crap that had happened in his life, he couldn't see what was around him. And the Lord began to show me, this is actually how many, many believers live their life. You know what the Bible says? It says that when you were saved, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness and transported into the kingdom of his dear son. That he took you off the street, so to speak, and he put you in a mansion. See, you have to realize this. In the spiritual realm, you have a mansion. In the spiritual realm, you guys over here, you have a mansion. You live in a mansion. Upstairs is that room that you're looking for. Around the corner is the food that you're looking for. Downstairs is the transportation that you need. Everything that you have need of, it's actually been made available. And you know why it's available to you? Because of one simple reason. Because you belong to Jesus. And Jesus bought and paid for you to live that way. He transported you out of the kingdom of darkness. Into the kingdom of his, of his dear son. Not because of what you did, not because of what you've done, not because of how good you are or how bad you've been. Nothing kept you out. Because you just needed one key to get in, and it was called the blood of Jesus. And he picked you up, and he placed you into this new place called the kingdom of God. And yet many of us are walking around with our head down, still believing and operating like we still live on the street. You know what's true about that is that if we don't ever pick up our head and look around and see where we really live, we actually won't live in it. I, I, I kind of took the vision and added my own to it. You know what I feel like God wants to do? I feel like he wants to run in to that mansion. And he wants to grab every single one of us who represent, that man represents. And he wants to grab us by the shoulders. And in a loving father way, he wants to shake us and say, would you look around? Look around. Look around. This mansion, it's mine. And I give everything to you. You got a room up there. Go, come on, girl. Go try on them new, them, them new dresses. They up there, they, are not, they will make you look good, girl. Oh, you want some purses? Yeah, they're up there too. Oh, 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 hey, hey man, go, go down there and pick out whatever car you want. And, I, and, and a lot of you are having a problem with, with the analogy that I'm using. Because I'm using material things. And I'm doing that for a reason. Number one, because I want to shake up the ground of all your tradition. Break down the walls of all your religion. <laughs> That's one reason I'm doing it. But we can actually relate to this. We, can, we, we actually, oh, we could imagine, oh, that's, I wonder what it'd be like to be a rich kid. Hear me today, in the kingdom, you're a rich kid. In the kingdom, you're a rich kid. And it's way more than material things. Way more. 
but it's also material things too. What are you going to live in when you get to heaven? Neil's living in a mansion. Anybody else? You're going to live in a mansion. He's, he's preparing a place for you. And it's, and it's a mansion. When you get to heaven, what kind of roads are you going to be walking on? Gold. All right, there's another one. You're going to have to deal with that one right there, okay? What kind of gates are there? We, do not, we are not in a relationship with a God of lack in any way. He literally wanted to show you how much he had by, by letting you in on a couple things in heaven. And one being the roads you're going to walk on, maybe drive on, who knows, with that sports car. That's what I'm talking about, right? It's, they're going to be gold. In other words, it's you, the, the bottom, the soles of your feet are going to be walking on gold. That's how much he's got. That's how many answers he has for your problems. That's how much wisdom he has for you. That's how many gifts he wants to pour out on you. That's how much power he's made available to you. You, in the spiritual realm, you live in a mansion. It's time for you to wake up and look around. Wake up and look around. This is what he's made available to you. You see, if we begin to let this thing kind of sink down and get on the inside of us, we start to act completely different. Some of you are like, yeah, it's called pride. No, it's actually not called pride. It's called confidence in the Lord. Many, many Christian circles have, have confused pride and confidence in the Lord. So they think that that looks like pride. That, 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 that guy, that pastor is prideful. Huh? Maybe right. I'm not, not sure who you're talking about. Maybe right. But it may actually be that he's walking in the confidence of the Lord. You know what it actually may be about? He understands he belongs to Jesus, and he acts like it. He thinks like it. He walks like it. He talks like it. I want you to, I'm just going to just step on your toes even more today. If, if, if I'm not, good. But if I am, just, it'd be too awkward for you to leave anyway, so you just got to stay, okay? <clears throat> I want you to picture Jesus, who Scripture says is your elder brother. This is the one you belong to. I want you to picture him for a moment like he's a famous athlete or a movie star. And you find yourself in the middle of L.A., downtown L.A. There's, you're walking down a street and there's, cl there's clubs on every side. Some of you are like, Jesus ain't going to be walking down that street. Yeah, he is. Okay. And you're walking with Jesus. And as he's walking past each club, you've got every bouncer and every owner saying, Jesus! In here, come, come to my club, come to my club. There's lines outside of all of them, but you're sitting there walking with Jesus and they're like, oh, it's Jesus. Look, look, it's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, here, 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 come here. And Jesus chooses a club and you're just following along and, he, and he, he, they open the little thingy, you know what I'm talking about? That thing, and just lets you right in, let Jesus right in. Jesus comes walking in and the, and the bodyguard kind of steps in front and stops you. But then Jesus turns around and goes, hey, 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 man, it's good. He's with me. It's good. It's good. It's good. She's, she's rolling with me. Let her in. And because you belong to him, hear me today, you can get into whatever blessing you read in Scripture. You can get into whatever promise you read in Scripture. You can get into whatever prosperity you read in Scripture. You can get into whatever God has made available to you, not by your own works, but by one work, because you're riding along, you're riding dirty with Jesus. That's, what's ha that, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's how you need to picture your life with him. You belong to him. So when you walk up to that problem, I want you to picture walking up to my podium is my problem. Walk up to that problem knowing that Jesus is right here with you. And that problem, yeah, we're going to do this, does this. It will hurt, yes. <laughs> I hurt my elbow. <clears throat> it gets a lot smaller. See, this is, this is Cody's height right here. Uh, <laughs> He's not here, so I could do it. 
<clears throat> oh, that's good. That was really good. I'm going to tell him about that one. Like, that's how good that one was. <clears throat> it's recorded. Yes, I know. Can't get away with anything around here anymore. But you walk up and you realize, yeah, I've got this in my life. This is real. This problem's real. I might be struggling financially. That's real. I might be struggling in my body. That's real. I might have a problem in my family. Okay. But I approach this problem way differently when I realize who I belong to. See, when I know that I belong to Jesus, I don't wonder if this is going to work out. You know what I wonder? I wonder when it's going to work out. Ah, oh, man, I belong to Jesus. This, is, this has to change. It's not bringing life and life more abundant. It's got to change. The symptom of my body, got to change. I belong to Jesus. I, that problem, oh, man, I just don't know how to fix this problem at my work or this problem in my family. Get, you, know, you know what begins to happen when you realize you belong to Jesus? All of a sudden, ideas start to come into your head that you would not think of until you realize you belong to him. Because when I, when I belong to Jesus, I start to get heavenly solutions for earthly problems. Because I realize what's available to me. Upstairs, go in my room, there's a little closet. You know what it's full of? You unlock it, creative, amazing ideas. Right there in my mansion. Because I belong to Jesus. I, I begin to just operate. I begin to operate different. You know, you know, you, you know you, how you operate when you realize you belong to Jesus? You start operating as a son and not a slave. A son. You remember the story of the prodigal son? No one remembers it. Okay. Everyone remembers that story, right? We always talk about the one who ran away. But remember the old one? You remember the old one? Remember what he was mad about? He's like, what's this, what's this party I hear about, Dad? Who are you throwing a party for? Oh, the one who ran away. So I've been sitting here slaving around all my years, and you hadn't even cut up a little bitty calf for my, my, me and my friends. That's what he said in the Keith translation, kind of. <clears throat> and what was the response of the father? Don't you realize that all I have is yours? All that I have is yours. I like to think the dad went on to say, listen, son, that ain't on me. That's on you. You could have had a party whenever you wanted, and I wouldn't have just given you that little bitty calf over there. I'd have given you the nice fat one. We'd have had some good fillets, ribeyes, picanha, all the things, whatever you wanted. If y'all never had a picanha, by the way, my gosh. That is how you live in the kingdom, okay? <laughs> Y'all didn't think that was very funny. That's all right. It's fine. I belong to Jesus. You don't have to impress me. You don't have to laugh at my jokes. I belong to Jesus. <clears throat> he thinks I'm hilarious, by the way. I think <laughs> he thinks I'm hilarious. Man, we operate different. We think different. Sons think different. You know what sons do? You know what my sons do? I'll give them a massive piece of cake for dessert, and then they'll ask me if they can have candy too. <laughs> when they know, <laughs> they were super lucky to get the cake. But for some reason, they think, maybe I can get a little more out of that guy. <laughs> You want to know why they act that way? Because they know who they belong to. Sons act different. Sons think different. You know what sons do that slaves don't do? Sons dream. Sons dream. Sons think that they have everything made available to them. You know what slaves do? Slaves walk around just doing the status quo because they're afraid that they, they, they don't even believe they can get out of what they're in right now. They have a box and a fence around what God can do in their life. Oh, but sons, let me say it this way, rich sons, 
Rich sons, you know what they believe? They believe the whole world is available to them. They actually believe they can affect the world. You're a son. You're a daughter. You have a rich dad. <laughs> Come on, you have a rich dad. Amen. It's okay. It's okay. Just get over that word. It is okay. He is rich. He is rich in every way possible. Way, way more than just material rich. He's rich in wisdom. He's rich in love. He's rich in grace. He's rich in mercy. He's rich in long suffering. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know you needed some long suffering. You're glad he's rich in that. <clears throat> he's rich. He has everything. 1 Peter 2.9 says this, just in case you don't believe me yet. It says, you are a chosen people. Who's he talking about? He's talking about believers. He says, you are, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Royal. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. And here it is. You're God's special possession. That should make you feel really, really good. You're his special possession. In other words, it was a joy when he transported you out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear son. It was a joy for him when he picked you up off the street and placed you into the mansion. It was a joy for him when he took you out of the kingdom of darkness and placed you in to the kingdom of light. Your God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. I want you to know today that belonging to Jesus doesn't just benefit your life, it benefits the ones around you. This is not just a selfish message. It's not just about learning and, and, and realizing you belong to him so what you can get. But you see, you know why he's, he calls you a special possession? So that you'll declare the praises of him who, who did it. And we, we, should have, we should have so many good things happening in our life. We should have so many testimonies that we're going around praising him in our workplace and in the mall and in the grocery store and wherever we go. We're kind of spreading the light. We're spreading the light. Why? Because we belong to Jesus. And he's making an impact in our life. And he came to give us life and life more abundant. And we actually look around our life and you can actually tell. You can look at my life and you can tell God's doing something. You can look at my life and say, God hand, God's hand is on him. God's hand is on her. She's different. He's different. Wow, the wisdom that pours out of him. Wow, the healing anointing that pours, that pours out of him. This is... I just, I can't talk about it anymore. We just got to realize it. I want you just to close your eyes for a moment. I want you to hear me say this. You belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. Wow. The one through whom which everything was created the one who walked on water, the one who healed the sick, raised the dead, the one that people thousands and thousands of years later are still talking about, the one who came and saved you in your mess and in your mistakes and in your nasty sin, the one that was so full of grace, he picked you up out of all of that and said, I want you. You're my brother. You're my sister. You, you belong to Jesus. In this life, you're rolling around with Jesus. You're walking with him. He's walking with you. That trial that you're in right now, Jesus is right there with you. 
I got good news for you. There is light at the end of the tunnel. You won't be here forever. You won't be here forever. Hear me, you're not gonna be here forever. You know how I know that? Because you belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. Thanks for joining us today. If you need prayer or have never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, we would love for you to reach out to us. Check out our website at renewlifechurch.com for all of our contact info. Also, if you're interested in financially supporting what God is doing at Renew Life, you can give via our website with text to give or by mailing a check to our office. God bless you and we hope to see you soon.